This year's WWDC was a mixed bag of giving us both what we wanted for years and also an homage to Android. Not only did they copy both Samsung's phone mirroring called Smart View, but they're finally giving us the ability to arrange icons where we want, which is, I don't even know how long Android has been doing that for on their phones and their tablets. Additionally, the app color scheme is something that is straight out of Android. And lastly, dragging apps to corners to tile them for Mac OS is just a page out of Windows. So Apple has basically closed some of the gaps to make their products even more like Android and PC, which is a bit weird because feels like Apple is finally admitting that perhaps they should have been more like Android all along. And of course, iPad users around the world are lamenting how lame the iPad OS update was. I don't know why tech reviewers hype up iPad OS before every WWDC, simply because Apple's philosophy is absolutely clear on the use case for keeping the iPad strictly an app-based OS. I personally think Stage Manager is awesome and I use it 100% of the time, but I don't think we'll get anything more out of iPad OS. With that said, there are five things I am actually excited for as someone who has used Apple over the last decade. First, they're combining the ability to add reminders to iCal. I don't even think they covered this, but you can see on their website that they're now finally incorporating the two. I've tried using reminders at least 100 times in my life, only to stop because of how annoying it is to have to use two separate apps between calendars and reminders. Secondly, I think tap acts are some of the easiest and best ways to engage with a message and let the other party know your reaction to their message. Apple is finally giving us more options, but you must know that this too was already available on WhatsApp. Thirdly is their ability to schedule messages later, which is quite useful and thoughtful of Apple to provide. Fourthly is a training load on the Apple Watch and a more macro view on your daily health with their Vitals app, including temperature tracking during sleep, which is incredibly useful when you look at recent studies on temperature tracking during sleep. And lastly, with iPads, I've already shared my lamentations on their OS, but what I think is really cool is their remote control option, which is something I'm excited to help my parents with when they're trying to troubleshoot some things on their iPads. Their calculator integration with notes is also really cool and fills a huge gap I think students will be able to appreciate a lot more. Also, this is a complete tangent, but I couldn't help but think about how their privacy features felt both reassuring, but also concerning. It's weird to think that you can lock apps behind Face ID, and while I understand some things may be sensitive, my mind just goes to places I'm not the most proud of. I know that not all things I want to keep private are necessarily mischievous, but I can also see how personally for myself, and especially for kids, anything that I want to keep hidden is probably not good for me. But that's just my personal thoughts, and I'm also married, so that adds to the equation. And that's it. As with most WWDCs, I finish watching them feeling both impressed and not at the same time. But I don't think that's necessarily an Apple thing. Apple Intelligence, which was a huge part of WWDC this year, feels very much like a Siri 2.0 that I may use sometimes, but won't become an integral part of my life. And as with all WWDCs, we watch it, experience a few incremental changes in the fall after an update, and move on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.